Oh. That's my daddy, though. I love you. I love you, baby. He looks good for 75, right? Yeah, I know. It's slowly coming to light for us to realize that, hey, oh, my dad's getting older. So is mine. So is my mom. And to see the people that we love transition into vulnerability, it's extremely hard because it's like, wow, wait a minute. What's going on? <laughs> my world is changing. Life is so short and goes by so fast. We've added 30 years to human life expectancy, inconceivable previously. What we haven't done is take this immense success and turn it into a victory for everybody. We are in the middle of a giant societal change. In the next three decades, there are gonna be more older people, those who are over the age of 65, than ever before in history. Some have called this the gray tsunami, and it's happening on a global scale. Now, like us, our parents are getting older every day. And in the same way that they took care of us, soon we're gonna be responsible for taking care of them. And some of us already are. My dad was always so strong and, you know, he was my big protector. He wound up taking out his pension so I could go to college. I want to give back to him. I want to make it easy for him. Because he's getting older. If that means I'm going to make his lunch and his dinner while he still goes to work at 75 years old in Manhattan from Staten Island, then that's what I'm going to do. But I feel like I've been gearing up for that. If my dad happens to get sick. I'm already there. Everyone is at a different stage in this process. Some of us haven't even started thinking about it, but others are quite familiar. My mom has been struggling with a kidney failure for about 20 years now. Me and my sister shared the responsibility. My sister and her fiance moved in together, and uh, I have shifted into the primary care role. Trying to find a balance between working and going back to school to obtain my master's in social work and constantly worrying and making sure my mom's okay. It can be difficult at times. It can be overwhelming sometimes, but it's all a part of it. Reginald and, at some point, Rebecca, are part of the 44 million caregivers, people providing unpaid care, mostly for a loved one, who are scattered throughout the United States. Of this 44 million, one quarter are millennials. And while on the whole, the majority of caregivers are women, when we isolate just millennial caregivers, it's evenly split. This subject was actually brought up in class and it rubbed me the wrong way because I am a male caregiver, you know, and uh, I, I enjoy taking care of my mother. To be able to give back what my mother has always given to me is truly incredible and I feel like it's uh, the cycle of the process of life, you know, and it's not easy. Some days you might be having a good day, but my mom might not be having a good day, you know. I don't think she realizes that, you know, she causes me distress when she tries to hide what's going on. I just don't want to not say be a burden, but like I don't want to shortchange them. Getting older, I see how frustrating it is for him because it's frustrating for all of us. I couldn't love anybody anymore. Her and my son, uh, they are my life. But it can be difficult. I'm 75, and I have a way of uh, wanting to do things. My daughter's 27, and she has a way of wanting to do things. I'm a perfectionist. It's got to be done just right. And I guess that's why I get so upset when tell me that I'm wrong, tell me that I didn't. I'll tell you when I forgot, when I remember, though. <laughs> I'm not in the greatest of health that I was when they was little. I'm still mom now. Don't get that wrong, I'm still mom. I think a lot of times you see on TV this negative stigma placed around aging. 
it takes away their power and it actually, you know, oftentimes take away their voice. We don't put much emphasis on our elders, but there's so much to learn from them. I got more wrinkles, more gray hair, but really deep inside, just you're the same person. Next year, Floyd's gonna retire after having worked at the Department of Health for over 30 years. My body is telling me that uh, it's time. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm not that quick anymore. Uh, you seem pretty quick. Uh, but not quick enough for today. Scholars have observed over the last 20 or 30 years that while people are living longer, old age is a roleless role in this country. That we have people with this deep desire to make a difference. And we don't have roles for them in general. As we live longer lives, there's going to be more chronic illness and more of a need to support our older population. And we're really not prepared. Take geriatrics, for example. Today, there are about 7,000 registered geriatricians in the US, but we need about 20,000 of them. We have urgent needs that apply to our financial and social security systems, to our lack of easy to navigate resources for our millions upon millions of caregivers. So why is it that we seem to be so afraid to approach and prepare for our increasingly older world? When you, when you think about getting older, you think about dying. The most basic fear of humanity is a fear of dying. And it seems to be the condition we have the greatest difficulty thinking about, planning for, and talking about. Getting older is a path we haven't built yet. You know, there little thing there. <laughs> Couple of teeth missing. <laughs> I look like a solid baseball player. I do. <laughs> baseball was great. I love it. If we all start having more conversations, a lot of the fears will be lessened and challenges improved. Today, when a third of us have a living will, and the average American family has just $5,000 in retirement savings, some would say these conversations are necessary. Just of uh, my babies. That's my favorite one. I done showed them where my life insurance is at. I have a living will. And, and but. I, I think it's incredible that she was able to take a difficult conversation and simplify it to be taught that Family is everything. So. Family is everything. Because you was an amazing mom and you did so much for us. So don't ever think that you're a burden. You gotta stop hiding stuff from me and you gotta start letting me know when that thing's going on, okay? Don't cry. I don't like seeing you cry. <laughs> you done did your part, baby. Now it's time for you to relax and just chill and enjoy the fruits of your hard work that you and dad, you know, both instilled in us. You gotta be here so that we can continue to thrive for you. Love you. Mm. I love you, baby. I love you too, daddy. Sweet dreams. Thank you. Boy, everything is good? Yes, sweet dreams. All right.